Now that I've downloaded and opened up the Kenwood DSP control application, we can go in and start our connection. The connection is made via Bluetooth between the phone and the amplifier itself. However, you can't just view Bluetooth connections from your phone. You have to come in and select the Bluetooth icon. Your amplifier will show up. You select that, and now we're connected. This is so that the customer, when they're in their car, searching for their Bluetooth for their head unit, they don't see the amplifier. Once we've made that connection, we can start off by setting up our speakers. We're going to select New, and we're going to name this Edge. Now that we've selected this, it gives us all of the channels of output. As you can see, 1 through 6 are a different color than 7 through 10. 1 through 6 are your amplified outputs. 7 through 10 are your preamp outputs. We must go in and assign all of these outputs so that way we can start playing music. We select number 1. We want this as front, left, tweeter. I know this because I took notes when we wired up the T-harness earlier. I go back, I select three. Three and four are my front, left and right, my mid-ranges. Five and six are my rear, left and right. Full range outputs. Seven and eight are going to be our non fading. subwoofer outputs. So now we have our entire system set up here. As you can see, we still have two channels of preamp outputs. If we want to add in another amplifier, we can. I select Save, and this will ask me, do I want to send these settings to the amplifier? I select Yes, and I'm finished. Once I select Finish, Audio will start playing from the receiver. Now that we have audio, the fun begins with the tuning process. Now that we have all of the speakers set up, it's time to go in and do our tuning. We'll go into Sound Settings and select Amp Data. This page gives us our time alignment, crossovers, in both of our EQ adjustability. We'll start off with time alignment, and we're allowed to go in and grab either one speaker at a time or grab two speakers depending on what we're doing. For time alignment, we're going to grab each speaker separately. We select next, and then this gives us our feet and inches on how far that speaker is. Our passenger side mid bass is about four feet, two inches, or we'll go three inches there. After our time alignment's done, we can go over and do our crossover network. So we're going to grab our tweeters here, hit next, we're going to high pass these, but we are going to bring this up quite a bit. We're going to cross them over at 3.5K. We have skipped out using the crossover networks that come with the 1700P components, so we are going to use this as a complete bandpass setup. So when we come in and select our mid-range and hit Next, 
we are going to create a band pass. We're going to bring the top end down. We're going to set these up right around 80 hertz. And then bring the top end down to about 4K. Our rear speakers, we're going to just high pass them at 80 hertz. So that way they're playing full range in the rear. Our subwoofer output, low pass, we're going to bring it up just a hair to right around 100 hertz. Even though this is our secondary amplifier, we still have full control over it through the preamp outputs of the 606 DSP amplifier. So I've crossed this over low pass at 100 hertz, so that way it matches up with the rest of our speakers. Now, once you've got your crossover networks all set up, your time alignment set up, we're going to come in and do some tuning. The nice thing about tuning is it gives us the availability to grab one pair of speakers or grab multiple speakers at the same time. So depending on what the customer is okay with, you can tune it for a half hour or you can tune it for hours on end, depending what your abilities are. We're just going to grab all the speakers here and go in and just make some minor adjustments. We're a little hot on the, uh, on the top end there, so we're going to bring the that down a bit. And also our subwoofer is a little hot too. So we're going to bring that down a hair. And we should be pretty good to go. We'll meter it out later. Now, if we want to go in and adjust parametric EQ, we can do that also. But we're going to leave this alone for this installation. Once everything's laid out, we're going to select Save. Just one more time. And this gives us the availability to save it in as a preset. You can save up to 50 different presets, so depending on the vehicles that you're doing. Probably F-150 and Dodge Ram will be your two most popular. So you can lay them out in your sound settings. That way you can just send it over to multiple amplifiers if you need to. Today's installation included a basic sound system tuning. Please keep in mind that the DSP Control app does have several advanced sound setting options, such as adjusting the filter slope, cue, level, and so much more.